Hello everybody and welcome to the Shaper 3D tutorial in which I'm going to show you how we can build this nice looking floor fan. In this exercise I will show you how we will start with a very basic set of sketches to build our basic building blocks, design our product and then use the history and Shaper's new history-based parametric modeling, how we can adjust all the individual modeling steps we did to build this design to perfectly perfect it. And with all that said, let's do it. So here we are inside a new empty design. Before we get started, let's make sure our snapping elements are turned on and the unit system is set to centimeters. I will go to the front view, move the screen down a little bit, create a sketch, and then at the bottom, draw a line to the left side. That should be 15 centimeters. The starting point I will lock so it doesn't move. And this base I will make horizontally constrained so it doesn't rotate. Then I draw a line straight up. You see this one is slightly rotated, not a big deal. Let's go to vertically constrained. Make sure it does and not rotate left or right, but goes straight up. This line will be 79 centimeters long. Zoom out a little bit. There we are. We can continue working on the top. So here at the end, I will draw a line to the left side, make this 6.5 centimeters long and horizontally constrained, and then I just draw a line down. Again, don't worry if you draw your line slightly crooked. With the constraints, we can correct everything. Very often I sketch profiles very quickly and then I use the constraints to perfect them. Here we draw at the bottom also a horizontal line and constrain it. And then this long line will be 66 centimeters long. So we kind of like have actually the fan body. Let's finish the fan base. I can draw a line and I can draw a line and I can draw a line. And on purpose, I very quickly sketch this out a little bit crudely, just to show you how powerful the constraint system is. All vertical lines I select and make horizontal, uh, vertically constrained. The first one here is 10 centimeters long and the smaller one is one centimeter long. There we are. And then this line automatically gets rotated accordingly. Perfect. So now we have the top and the base ready. We can exit the sketch. Select the sketch profile of the base, select a vertical edge and do a revolve. The first sketch is hidden. Let's show this again. Select the sketch profile, select a vertical line and do a revolve again. Beautiful. Now we have a, a pretty nice looking cylinder sitting on a cylindrical base. Now we can imagine this one can rotate very easily and that's a nice solid base. Now we can work on where actually the air outflow will be. To make work a little bit easier, I will hide body two and one. Create a new sketch and then somewhere draw two vertical lines. I select both, make them vertically constrained. I also make them equal, so the same. One line I can select and dimension to be 40 centimeters. Then with an arc motion, I draw two arcs top and bottom, select an arc, select a line and make them tangent. So the lines and arcs flow tangently nicely into each other. And then when I select the radius, it should be three. So we have a um, diameter of six centimeters. And we can clearly see that this is floating somewhere in space and I will use the Z axis as a snapping position. So now it's nicely left and right centered. 
and to have more control of where, for example, the bottom and the top edge will be, I can go ahead, click on project, and then select from the first sketch, the top and the bottom line, and project them into the second sketch. If I hide the first one, now you can see actually the first, uh, sorry, the, the top and the bottom magenta lines, and these are projected edges. I can't move them around. They are projected in. So when I adjust the first sketch, then these magenta lines will move. And what's actually really nice about this is I can draw here two vertical lines. These lines I will make a construction line and really important, I will make them vertically constrained. Now, if I go back to sketch one, you will see that this is half of a sketch. So the center line here, that is really where the center of my cylinder is. So in sketch two, this construction line is perfectly centered, meaning that actually this profile is perfectly centered. Now I can click on these lines and then take a look at how long they are. I can make this 12 centimeters and this is 14. Let's make this 13 centimeters. Well, 13. Both lines are the same, which means actually that this element is perfectly centered on our cylinder. So with the sketch profile selected, let's move this one out. You see that actually I moved this one out while not seeing body two. I can turn on body two and this is a little bit too far moved out. Let's open the history. There's extrusion. Click on the extrusion feature and you see we can now go ahead and move this actually back. Eight centimeters, that looks actually pretty good. Perfect, great. So this was actually a, a nice quick example to show you how powerful the history is when we have to adjust a model after we actually created it. The top part, I would like to rotate a little bit. Now this is a revolved body um, because of the sketch. The top surface is flat, not a big deal. Select the surface, go to the move rotate command because this is circular. It's the widget is positioned at the center of this circular shape or disc. And then we rotate this to 15 degrees. Beautiful. Very nice. This is good. Okay. This body and the main body will be joined to a union. So we select both, double tab on a face, select then the whole body, and then we select Boolean union. Now this, as you can see, is actually just one body. I now actually, for manufacturing purpose, we will have a base and we have a top, and then we have a front shell and we have a back shell. So that means somewhere on top and somewhere on the bottom, I also need to, at one point, split everything a little bit apart. So I will hide the base. I will go then select the bottom face, go to add plane and move this plane six centimeters, uh, four centimeters up. Very good. The problem with the top, uh, the top is it is rotated. So what do we do? It's actually very easy. We simply go back in time. With my finger, I press and hold the move rotate command on a Mac and PC, it's right mouse button and insert a breakpoint. 
And then here actually I have to move this on top. It should be should have been after the extrusion. Very good. And then there I can add a construction plane. And I go down four centimeters. And then this breakpoint I can delete. So now we can see where actually the breakpoint was inserted. We can clean up the design nicely by moving, for example, both offset planes next to each other. So inside our history, we see cleanly how we worked. Also here again, when we click on the commands, we can adjust them. So I will move this one to down and the other one I moved to up. So in relationship to the air outflow, they are evenly spaced. And this is actually pretty good. Perfect. Okay. So we do have actually now the ability to explore the rounding. Do we round this completely? This looks actually really nice. Five centimeters. So we have a, a bigger flare on top and then the bottom. Click on the cock and go to G2. When we lower this value, there you can see how we add then a smaller radius to it. Now this is up to the preference how we would like this to, to work out. This is actually the top arc is circular. So this is G1, which means I can actually simply go back to the edge continuity in the history, select this to be G1, and then explore also here the amount of the radius and what type of shape I would get. Now well, this looks actually pretty good. I'm satisfied with that. Perfect. So again, you see now you, know, you model something and then you use the history to perfect actually your design or quickly explore how does this look? How does that look? Everything is looking pretty good. So we know this will we will open because there the air comes out here in the back. We will have to cut slots. So this is actually now the moment where we will start the shelling. Ideally, you want to do the shelling after we did the filleting, because if we shell now, 0.2 centimeters, you can see that even in the inside, we have a beautiful offset of the outside surface. Very good. So that one is done. We can then also select the main body, select this construction plane and say split. Select the bottom part, construction plane and select split. And these two split planes, I don't necessarily need any more. Oops, that was the wrong button, I'm sorry. There we are. These two planes we don't need anymore. So I put them into a folder, C planes, and hide them. But with the split, what I did was actually separating the top and the bottom from this design. This is actually very useful later when we are creating the, the mating parts. Now, because this is shelled, we can work actually on the air um, opening in the back because air has to be sucked in and then is being pushed out. There are various ways how you can do this. You can, we can create a sketch from the site or from the back. I will use actually the back for a very simple reason. We have sketch two and sketch two basically shows me the top and the bottom maximum distance of where 
I want the air to go in. So I make a new sketch. Then I will do a project of these two lines, for example. And that actually would project then everything uh, left and right. So I know exactly in the sketch where the part is. And then we'll do another project of the top part. There we are. And to make things easier, I'm going to hide sketch two. Beautiful. So now you see like, where's my air outflow in the sketch? And I can work on where I'm going to suck in the air. I will draw a line horizontally and then I will select the line and the arc and say tangent. And you see that moved actually the line right onto it. Using the grid, it's actually really nice to work left and right nice and clean without the need of any complicated symmetry lines. I can turn on the visibility of this body so I can see how long this is, 10 centimeters, and nah, that's good. And then I draw a line down, over and back up. So I make a small rectangle. These projected lines were helpers. So we make them a construction line, select everything and say horizontally, vertically constrained so they can't move. Very good. I could, could strain everything even more. I don't necessarily have to. Now with this piece done, I will extrude this one outwards. There you see now how it intersects actually with the part. And this is a one centimeter line. So when I select these horizontal edges and round them with 0.5 of a centimeter, I get nice and beautiful circular ends. I can select the whole body, double tap. Now I want to have multiple cuts. That's an easy task for the pattern. So I go to the pattern tool. We use linear. Spacing is actually perfect. Then I drag this one down. For the spacing, we can now, we have a one centimeter opening. Maybe we will have a 1.5 spacing, so five millimeters in between. And then we will add more copies. So 30 is not enough. 34, tick too much. 33, there we are. Perfect. Very good. Again, because everything is parametrically, we can go back to the features and adjust it. 32 will be even better. You see this move this a little bit up. Here, this opening is right inside the opening on the front. So I might be able to even just go with 30. So there you can see actually how I'm, I'm building everything. Yeah, there, very good. Okay, very nice, good. Now, this whole pattern I can select, move up and down, reposition it. I can also select my main body then select the folder linear pattern 01 with all the parts inside and click subtract. And you see then this way, it's a very fast way to select multiple objects. Body two is my target. And then linear pattern 01 folder are my tools. I do not want to keep anything, click done. And we have these amazing cuts done. Beautiful, really nice. This looks top. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, this all feels. 
So we prototyped the air intake. We also have an air outtake. The problem there is we have nothing that really prevents any accident like fingers going in. Because we have this flat surface, we can select it and then right on that plane of that surface, create a sketch. Here I have two intersection points. I can draw those. There we are. And that is actually 5.6 centimeters. There are different ways how we now can approach this. Uh, one really nice way is working with the pattern or working with the sketch to create equal elements. I will draw one line down, go over and go up. And this I will make two centimeter uh, two millimeters so 0.2 centimeters and inside the sketch i can select these three lines and then use the pattern tool to at the moment prototype how this actually would look there we are i realized i made a tiny mistake this line is actually um, not perfectly centered so um I will I will do the following. These uh, this line was good. I will draw a line to the left and the right, horizontally constrained. Then I make this equally constrained, and say this should be 0.2. There we are. And then I draw a line straight up. There we are. And then this center line that we make a construction. So we have a center line and then left and right, we have now this, uh, this element here. One second, let me not select anything. There we are. Okay, good. Let's go back actually to the, the sketch. And we will do now exactly the same. We will select this three edges and then we can use the pattern tool to explore how this could look. So we will have an outside uh, piece then that's a little bit shorter and then we have kind of like where I'm tapping there, there, there and there nice and equal openings. So this is actually pretty good. So the pattern to the left and the pattern to the right, that will work. I will not do the pattern in the sketch. This was really more an element to um, work actually with the piece. And I will hide all these elements here. I just only want to see the sketch going to edit mode. Try to close the sketch. Um, this one here, I can make a construction line and then draw a line there. It is actually perfectly close now. So this construction line is more kind of like a horizontal, like um, center element similar to this line. Very good. No, this piece has to go into the body. Now, as you can see, this is where it is. Can go to a side view, drag this in, uh, turn on the section cut. And now there we can see how far this went in, turn on the history and maybe make this 1.5 centimeters. Very good. Then, this I move up a little bit. This lower face I move down a little bit. There we are. 
Very good. Beautiful. And now we do the pattern. Front view. Double tap face. Select all piece. Go to pattern. And one centimeter for the spacing. That is perfect. Very good. And before I actually mirror everything over, I want to perfect how this will be flush to that surface. So you see, I'm selecting each face and then select the surface and say replace face. Also here, I will do it even while it intersects actually with that surface. It's a super nice tool to match surfaces. And I only do this on one side. And when that is done, then I will go over to the other side. Now here and there and replace face. There we are. Perfect. Very good. So these two I now can select and then because we work symmetrically, I will use the mirror command and mirror this over. Kind of like the Y axis. There we are. And the linear pattern folder and all the parts in it and body two, we will do a union. And then here, the folders we can remove. Perfect. And to help our design, let's clean up and put all the sketches into one folder. Let's take a look at what we have. There, that looks pretty nice, no? Good. We can currently see through the design and the interior elements are missing. That's not really a big problem. All we need to do is go to uh, sketch one. There we are. And I will do a quick revolve body. Then this piece we will shrink down a little bit in the diameter. And then we will also shrink this one down along the vertical height. Move this body out of this folder. There we are. Now there we can see. And there's... There's something inside. Again here, this is our first offset. Uh, sorry, yeah, face offset, correct. And we can make this a little bit bigger so it covers more of the interior geometry. Very good. And these are pre-made mechanical parts. We don't have to model those. The shelling, the casing goes are outside. That's different. Good, so this is actually um, nicely done. I did not shell actually the bottom yet. I will shell this later when we're going to do all the fillet roundings because this is something I would like to round and then shell. So the inside is also correct. Knowing this, this is a step I will do all at the end. So the base, no, we, we wait for later. Okay, I would like to very quickly create a nice hand grip right here. So, side view, new sketch. There we are. We can draw a line 3.5 centimeters to the left, then 1.5 centimeter down, a little bit at an angle, a line. There we are. This is actually really good. And I'm going to hide all my parts because this I will extrude by eight centimeters one side. Then I make this 16 centimeters. And round also these edges half a centimeter. This way I'm, I'm not going to 
interfere actually with these bodies. Super easy. So the reason why I built this one is the following. I will select my top part. I will select this new body and then I say intersect. Just show me that intersection and you see I will actually get um, just the shell surface but actually there I want to have a volume kind of like what the blue part is but only the blue part inside this cylinder. So let me show you something that's actually pretty cool what I recently learned. If you select a body and then if you select a face can be flat or curved then you can split a body by a curved surface. This part now we can delete. This one we will hide. And there we see now we have the thing that was inside. So it's kind of like the uh, intersect idea. We use two millimeters for the shelling. So this rounded surface I will select, shell it by two millimeters. There we are. Pretty cool, no? So let's go back to here. But I did not really cut open actually that space where the piece has to go in. Not a big deal. So I will go to the delete feature, insert an, a breakpoint. And then from this body, double click, I will subtract this body. But I want my removed body to remain. And then I remove the breakpoint. And the shelling here breaks, not a big deal. Just select the original face, fixed. Cool. And then these two pieces we simply fuse together via the join command. Go to the side view, so right and go section cut. And look at this. This is this is beautiful. This works really good. Okay. Very nice. We are slowly reaching a point where we also have to talk about fillets and splitting. So the top part is split and the bottom part is split off. Um, let's split actually this main body because it has to be a front and a back shell. We simply can select the main body, double click it, then go to split body and because again everything is symmetrical we can do that via kind of like this plane so the z and x plane let's move this apart yeah there we are perfect that looks really good um this is the top it's, at one point it makes sense to really give all your parts names. So this is front, this is back, bottom, uh, this is the base, and this is kind of like the fan cylinder in the inside. I'm going to hide this for the moment. Okay, beautiful. I also would like the, um, not only to have these two shells kind of like sitting next to each other, but slightly intersecting, kind of like a kind of like a, a lip function, and also to the top and the bottom. So um, I'm going to select the top one. Go isolate and. I will select this flat surface that's round, go to sketch. Then I will use the offset command and from the inside or the outside, select an edge, one millimeter, perfect. And then here I will move this one up by 0.5 of a centimeter, so five millimeters, beautiful. 
isolate off uh, top one we turn off there is this other um, uh, sketch again and then here now I can go ahead and say so hey you please extrude five millimeters up also this one I hide and then here we add this five millimeter lip to it beautiful no so you see the top will very neatly just sit on that this is how easy actually this type of work is now then we can select the bottom part and here pretty much it's exactly the same process select the top surface go to sketch and then offset select either the inside or the outside select a sketch and an edge make the sketch and then here we select in the sketch profile and cut into it by five millimeters show the sketch and then to one part we add it to and then we do the same to the other part I would like to point out you know, all these steps again there are calculated and captured so I can adjust the initial material reduction or removal and then I can also work on the addition of material now I can I can see all these values here minus five minus five minus five so if everything should be three millimeters I just change these 0 0.5 to 0 0.3 okay so that was done uh, let's hide this we have here the sketches move those in there this actually i bring to the bottom the fan i will bring also to the bottom it's the least important object now we can also talk about how does this go to the left and the right that's actually also pretty easy so we work with a sketch again there we are new sketch and from this point here uh, so there I draw a line down so this is linked and just drag this one down and down and down and then i connect it to the correct point very good i can exit the sketch and we can now decide this is actually the 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 piece we are going to extrude but this cannot be extruded because this is a revolved surface well we have the sketch selected here's our axis again now i work very symmetrical i can just select it revolve it and then we decide by how many degrees five degrees perfect you we mirror over to the other side perfect and then you and you and you we can join um, to make things a tick easier i will go the opposite way first i will say from this body i would like these two to be removed it's simply an an easier math problem to solve keep my removed bodies thank you so there you see that is done and then I go to the front and then here I say all this join together there look at this there beautiful maybe five degree is a tick too much so here's the revolve command two degrees 
there look at this how beautifully this was updated yeah this looks this looks easier because it's a revolved it's a circular surface it's not um, parallel faces so with this slight overlap this will be easier to snap these two shells um, horizontally into each other cool very very good now we can at this point um, think about filleting and rounding edges i will work at the base because it didn't really work there much yet so this i would like to be one centimeter that looks very good and then this i will round by 0.5 which is way too much point 0.25 that is better okay i'm going to isolate this one and say this one 0.1 okay so 0 0.5 0 0.25 0 0.1 and now i can select the bottom part and shell it 0.2 there you see it. now all the faces in the inside are shelled too here um i have now the the option to say so this one is filleted and i have actually the fillet command from that here i can keep it this way or i will go and say add it and with the pencil i will click and drag over this and add more actually to it and you see now the other part is actually rounded too here i have multiple edges that need filleting so uh, drag right to left select only edges and then probably here too There we are. Let's do a, a rotate. That looks all really good. And then the top. Careful now how far you go in and what you overlap. But this all looks really nice. Point one. Uh, there are some blending issues. Uh, sometimes it's also easier to just go step by step. I have to be careful with the pieces you select. Point one. Oh yeah, I, I understand actually the mistake I made. This is actually point one. So a point one is actually um, very, very aggressive. Point zero one. That actually would have been nicer. So, okay. little mistake but i fixed it i keep sometimes these mistakes i make also in the videos so you see also i make mistakes and i can show you how i will fix it so same deal here like we did before i go to this one beautiful view and then go to edit click and drag and add more edges to it there Now there we see how this all grows really well. And which edge here is missing? I think the one at the bottom here. Yeah. There, clicked it perfect pretty nice very good since we worked on this mid section part we we can isolate this one the easiest way to only select the outer edges is i will go to the top view click and drag only edges 
only the outside ones now because the others might actually <laughs> as they are part of the 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 other fillets so i deselect this very good and then also here oh, point 0.1 actually zero one there nicely rounded and if this is actually too small well i can go ahead now and say 0 0.05 make this bigger this actually does not have the lip so we might even go with 0.1 there we see like half of the uh, the material thickness is filleted. Again, I think this is a really great example to show you how powerful the history is. The top will be nice. I would like to have here a little bit of a bigger edge rounding, but I will run into the following problem. If I round this too much, uh, yeah, we will, well, we will cut into our interior material you see this no so this fillet i might have to actually move after i rotated this edge the fillets i created here were finishing touches this is actually more really part of the design so if i go to the history i can see move rotate zero one that is actually the face rotation I can give this a name so i inside the history can actually see it there it is so this fillet i will move right after i did this face rotation there and there you see the inside is nice and rounded well, this is how you can just then reorganize your history to create exactly the type of bodies and designs you want. Last thing we need to do now is actually create an interface. So I will select this um, surface. Then I will add a construction plane, move this a little bit away because I can select this edge and project it onto this construction plane. This construction plane I don't need anymore. Where, we, where do we have the seaplanes? There, hide this. And in here, I can now go ahead and create one circle another circle and another circle all three circles should be equal 1.5 centimeters i do have because of the projection the center point take a look at what i'm doing here right now i'm drawing a nice triangle and all these lines i'm going to make a construction line then this long line will be vertically this will be horizontally and these two will be equal so now i have my sketch symmetry so if i select one circle and move this around you see how the other one follows it pretty cool no So I can play with, bring this one down to here, and I select these two, uh, these two circles, go to project, and then I select the face below. In here, I would like to project as edge only on face. So I'm cutting actually the face. 
which means I have no individual elements where I could create, for example, a button into it, different material. I can very easily move this down just by a notch. I meant a notch, not so much. There. There we are. Round those or fillet those. Very good. So there's a very tiny surface depression. The user can feel that there is actually an interface element. Very good. And inside the sketch, I will create left and right, um, for example, a plus icon and a minus icon. For this, I will use the center sketch. From the center, I sketched this one out, 0.6. 0.2, very good. Then we do the same here, 0.6 and 0.2 for the height. We need one more, 0.2 and 0.6. Here we will add actually one circle and then another circle. Oh, click the wrong tool. And there we are. Also material thickness, kind of like two millimeters. Very good. And then here we will add our, our rectangle 0.2 and 0.6. Very good. And thanks to the grid here, I will decide along the grid, I drew two lines. And with these lines, I will actually trim everything. Now I use the trim command and remove everything what I don't need. There, beautiful. Okay, now I can select here all this. Now the rest are construction lines, so they don't really influence anything. This is actually um, normal geometry, so or sketch geometry, that's different. Project and there. Actually, hold on. Let's go to the project command. I think I clicked the wrong sequence. So this I would like to project onto there. Perfect. But sorry, I made one more mistake. Uh, this actually should not be a sketch that's projected, but should be a phase. Kind of like cut into here. There. That is what I wanted. Then when you adjust the sketch afterwards, also the projection the face slicing result will update too. Very good. So to bring this all to an end, we can select the sketches here, bring this to there. This is all done. Now there we can see now how this could look and how this could function. Let's turn on the fan body and go to the visualization tool. Our default material it's kind of like what everything is modeled with. I will select and say this should be this rather rough ABS material. Thank you. We can adjust 
the color perfect now everything has the same color the body inside for the fan that one i make darker so we have a better contrast this looks good and then i need to click exactly where our interface elements are it's a little bit of click sudoku and these we can give the new emission material emission material is pretty nice because it allows you to give actually buttons a color and it has a light bloom effect let's go to the materials this is our and uh, not materials the environment we can play with the light rotation yeah this looks really nice perfect and there we are now we rebuild actually this nice looking flow plan in shaper 3d with the new history-based parametric modeling system